Are you struggling with how to take beautiful portraits? In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how I take beautiful portraits and this is for beginners as I'm going to keep things very simple. We're going to go over the location I shot at, I'm going to share some tips and tricks of what I'm shooting, how to shoot, what I'm looking for, and hopefully by the end of this video you'll learn how to take beautiful portraits as well. But in my opinion, composition can make or break an image and this is true for any uh, genre of photography, street photography, landscapes, or portraits and etc. With portraits, you want to make sure that your subject is in the center of the frame. You don't want to have a crooked image and you want to make your photo feel balanced. If you shoot like this, then the image is going to feel too suffocating. So leave a little bit of headroom, but make sure to not give too much headroom or else the photo will look like this and this will feel unbalanced. You wanna make the viewer's eyes be focused on the subject and not wander around with, with so much negative space. There are a few stylistic choices you can make and it's, it's a bit more nuanced. Rules can be broken, but I'll refrain from speaking on it because I'm just trying to simplify it for the beginner photographers out there. So composition should be the main focus when you're out shooting a portrait. Once you become well seasoned at portrait photography, you can take liberties and get creative with your composition. Positions. Another thing that you should start doing is nailing the eyes in focus, making sure that it's tack sharp. But be careful of trying to nail focus when shooting wide open. When you are shooting with something like an f1.4 lens at f1.4, the eyes can be a little bit tricky to nail focus and this is due to the fact that the focal plane is just razor thin. You may find that it would be hard to nail focus on the eyes, you may find that perhaps that the eyelash or the nose will be in focus instead of the eyes and uh, doing so can make your image look a bit distracting. In order to combat this, I recommend stopping it down to f2 to f2.8. That way you can get a little bit of that blurry background and your subject's eyes are guaranteed to be sharp. A lot of times I shoot at f5.6 to f8 for portraits just because I want more details in my shots. So if you're new to this photography journey, just know that it's okay to shoot portraits at a higher aperture than some something that is wide open like an f1.4, f1.2, or f0.95. So you have eye tracking on your camera, turn that on. Nowadays, modern cameras are getting real good at nailing the eyes in focus. However, if you are using an older camera that doesn't have eye tracking, what I like to do is to move my focus point to the closest eyes of the model and just start shooting that way. This way is also good if you feel that your camera's eye tracking isn't good enough. And once you got the composition and uh, uh, nailing the eyes down, the next thing you want to think about in order to get great looking uh, portraits is the choice of lighting. And since I'm talking to beginners, I'm going to assume that you don't want to think about artificial lighting at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on natural lighting, AKA the sunlight. When you are shooting outside, there are a few lighting scenarios that you have. One is harsh lighting, and then there is overcast, and last is golden hour. A lot of people have said golden hours is the best time to shoot because it has beautiful soft lighting and you can make any image look good. But I find that it's quite hard for beginners. For one, you only get Get like one or two hours of good lighting and I feel that's just not enough time to get what you want and you're constantly in a race against time and I feel that if you are rushed because you have a certain amount of time for golden hour you're not going to be able to produce uh, those uh, beautiful portraits especially for beginners so what I recommend for beginners to do is shoot on a day uh, that is overcast. This way the light is uh, more even and flat and you don't have to worry about harsh lighting at all. When it's overcast, the clouds are actually blocking the sun and it acts like one big natural softbox for you. So you can get and even lighting across your subject. And this is going to make your life so much easier. Uh, and you can just focus on uh, nailing down the focus and the composition and not have to worry about, you know, the direct sunlight or anything like that. And that could alter 
the way your images look and that's what i did in this shoot you're seeing right here on this particular shoot it was an overcast day so i had no problems with harsh lighting or anything like that harsh lighting is much harder to shoot uh, with for beginners so i don't recommend this for newbies out there but harsh lighting is my favorite type of lighting to shoot because i can get creative with harsh lighting and like just shaping that light but like i said earlier this is only for the advanced photographers out there who understands how to use natural light to their advantage and if you want to see how to shoot in harsh lighting, I'm going to leave you with a couple of videos that I've done in the description below. So you can watch that after you finish this video. Now, when you are out shooting, it's important to choose a very good location. How do you know what is a good location? Because it's it, it's quite subjective, isn't it? I can only share with you my thought process on what I think makes a good location for me. The reason why I chose this location for my audience is because I wanted to showcase this town in Portugal. I feel that it's different from what you guys are accustomed to seeing if you guys are from North America, you know, living in, you know, highly populated major cities where you can see high rises, where you can see sky lines and etc this town is quite old it's called old town and uh, i like it because it's different from what i've what's being shown in like you know the youtube sphere out here and since it's very old you're going to get a lot of textures from the buildings and the colors as well and as well you get to see some cobblestones as a, a walkway a pathway all of this makes me think this was an interesting location uh, the town itself has character in some of the images that you are seeing paints are chipping off the walls you, and you can see the cracks in some of these images as well and the next thing i look for are interesting color pops that you find in the said location so i found these i found this yellow arches that i thought would look great in contrast to the model so i had her standing somewhere in the middle while i try to figure out a composition and i got something like this And I think it looks good because it, this church is so white from the walls that it almost looks very bland. So to have some color pop in the frame really makes the photo stand out in my opinion. Another location that I found during this walk, which I thought was interesting for texture and colors, is this wall of this wall of leaves that was just growing on the side of these uh, on the side of the buildings. You can see this everywhere here, especially in the Algarve. And when when spring comes, the flowers bloom, and you get even even more beautiful colors from the flowers so you can actually revisit the same location and have an entirely different photo and vibe just because of these the, the flower walls so even something as simple as this location that people pass so many times without thinking about it can make your portrait stand out So when you have a good location with interesting textures and stri striking colors, it will elevate your portraits to the next level. So start thinking about interesting locations to shoot in your local town and see what you can come up with there. I feel in the Algarve, there's not much to shoot. It's not like a booming city like Lisbon, Toronto or L London. It's actually quite slow living over here. Things aren't as developed. And most photographers that often do shoot in the Algarve, they tend to shoot at the beaches here. And you do have the beautiful Atlantic Ocean waves, you have the sand and the high orange cliffs that makes for such a beautiful image as well but it's been done so many times before and i don't know about you guys but i don't think i can constantly shoot at different beaches here because eventually they will all start to look the same to me so for me i try to find the beauty in these old rustic looking towns i try to look at things differently obviously the locals look at me weird because they're probably wondering why is this asian guy photographing this place it's so ugly <laughs> and i did have someone local say that to me before uh, you know they're like why are you shooting here there's nothing here it's pretty ugly <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and this is your vision. Anything you think looks cool should be the location to shoot at. I hope you learned something in this video. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more photography tips and tricks videos like this. And if you like the way I color grade some of these images, th uh, these are from my preset pack cinephiles and they are for sale on my website and I'll leave the links to that down in the description below as well. And um, thanks so much.